And we're live. Bam! What up, what up, what up? We are up? back, we are back, we are back. Yes, sir. Trying to hit my podcast. To be. We are in the building. In the building. Thank Doing y'all thing. for checking us out. Yup, yup, yup. So, uh, if you uh, watch this, you know, just invite your friends and followers. If you're catching it on the replay, share it with all your friends. And, you know, still check us out on Instagram. And YouTube. YouTube, yeah. Facebook, all of that. You know what I mean? We on all of those. So we everywhere. We everywhere. We everywhere. So people will never live, but we everywhere. Exactly. We're going to uh, get some people invited in. And we're going to do the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk some hip-hop. Talk it. Episode 54. So we've been doing the damn thing. You, 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 you. Let me invite who I can invite. The limited people that will let me invite. Damn, man. something in front of me to work hard for a goal you know some kind of aspiration so you know we doing the damn thing and I know I know you got school going on man. So, man. <laughs> so I know man. you got some goals man. How, how's that going man, man, you this, <laughs> man I got this paper I gotta do which I about like I said I'm about finished I just had to get a couple of you know get a book yeah cause I, most of my stuff I printed off as far as like facts and stuff go, but I just gotta, you know, I print it off of, you know, I have to get a book or whatnot to yeah. uh, get some of the stuff. But I mean, I'm about to knock it out. I just gotta, I do, I gotta do that. I gotta go to um, get fill out my uh, graduation application. Okay. okay. I will be graduating this, um, hopefully this December. Hey, and, that's what's uh, up, man. Yeah, but then I gotta go right back into. Um, what is it? Um, yeah, my goal is to go to A and T to you know start in the communications. But okay, okay. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that in the spring per se or whatnot. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, man, this week is a big turn up week for A and T. G ho, G ho, G ho. Yeah, so we got that going on. Yeah, I'm gonna be out there. 
the night trying to, you know, I'm going to do the Uber and picking up folks. And yeah, yeah. So y'all you just get a lot of business with that, man. Yeah, so y'all just come holler at your boy, you know what I'm saying? Right. You need to take your drunk ass down the street so you don't have to be driving, you know, man, got you, you know yeah. what I mean? Fucking yeah. for a small fee. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. And y'all, you know, for y'all, for those of y'all who don't know, A&T celebrates Jiho every homecoming because they consider it. Jiho stands for the greatest homecoming oh, on earth. earth, and so it's real lit around here. I'm telling y'all, it's real it's lit. Crazy, so man. you know, they, they actually get, this is good too because they get if you really think about it, they get an extra hour of partying because time falls back tonight. Oh yeah. So remember, folks, set your clocks back. Yeah. You heard it first. Yep. Over here at TryHipHopPodcast.com. Fall back. You know what I'm saying? Get all your news. You know what I'm saying? We up in here, man. Yeah, man. Tell you about the fall back. Yeah. Tell you about, like, you know, craziness, man, going on, man. Yeah, That's man. what we do. We, we do stuff for the, for the, you know what I'm saying, for our listeners, man. Yeah, man. That's what we gotta do. Gotta do it up for y'all, so, you know. Clock's got to be set back an hour, so you're gonna catch that extra hour catch of that sleep. Catch that extra sleep. You know what I mean? So you can sleep, sleep in a little longer tomorrow. You know, feel like you really got some rest finally. You know, if if your life is uh, hectic. Yeah, man. So um, that extra you sleep know, work. sleep is good whether your life is hectic or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't really, you know, function good without good sleep. So man. don't sleep. You ain't never. Learned. <laughs> Oh, man, just, come on, man, come on, man, come on. Man. But, um, but yeah, so, you know, it, it seemed like, um, it seemed like it came a little quicker this year. Is it always, like, early November when they do it? It's always, to me, it's always, it like it's usually, usually, it's, nah, it usually, early? usually it's around this time, usually it's around, just about, you know, around Halloween, like, oh, sometimes okay. if it falls on the weekend, it usually falls back. Well, actually, it's kind of funny. You usually will fall back to the end of October. Okay, yeah, maybe that's I, what I'm thinking about. Yeah. The end of October instead of the end of November. Yeah, nah. Nah, it'll, nah that'd be too big. But yeah. Yeah, well, to that, to this, and But really, you know why they do the um, the whole falling back of the time and stuff? Why is that? Because they disrespect. Now, this is what they say. Because what it does is say just a man trying to confuse you. That's right. <laughs> no, they say it's supposed to um, save like one percent of the energy mm. from like the United States and Britain. That's why they fall. Oh. That's why they spring forward in the spring, fall back in the fall. Okay. okay. Yeah, but some most people in other countries they just stay in the same time, yeah, no or, matter what. No matter what. Yeah. Which makes sense. I think it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I don't see a, you know, I don't think it's that big of a deal that you need to do that. But, nah. you know, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, that's that's part of the, you know, culture here in the U.S. Um, you know, the the culture that they uh, imposed upon Yeah, us. pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Oh, we, we, we live in a... We live in a post world society. Yeah. A free I didn't know you knew that. Yeah. I didn't know you knew that. <laughs> Mr. Indian person. Right. Yeah. I'm not Indian. Right. <laughs> no. But yeah, man, so it's it's um it is it is what it is. This is America. So This is America. That's what he said. This That's is America. America. So, you know. Don't get this look then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, oh, yeah. yeah, man. All so right. we done got everybody. I can do everybody else can just kind of watch on the replay. Yeah, man. Thank you for everybody else for watching. Yeah, and the one or two people that's watching. Yeah, the one. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, whether y'all here or not, we're gonna still keep doing it every yeah, day. Damn right. Yeah, man. Damn we right. Just, we just love this hip hop. Yeah. I um. One of my friends at work is a uh, female. She was like, um, she said she, I invited her onto the page. So she um, came on earlier this week and she was like, yeah, I saw a question about Wu-Tang. And she was like, I didn't know at first what to say. And she was like, and I started thinking about it. She's like, almost got me cursing because she's like, you know, I remember Wu-Tang playing, there ain't nothing to fuck with. I was like, yeah. yeah I said, we don't care if you curse. I said, we curse all day. All day. All day long. So, all day. So, um, Shout out to her. Her name is uh, Jennifer. 
So you might see her sooner or later. Oh, that's the one thing I want to shout out to. Um, actually, this week when I was, because I drove around for Halloween. Okay. Um, I picked up this young girl from uh, HBU, and she was really into like hip hop, and like she actually was talking about, you know, she took a class and they studied the culture and whatnot. Okay. And um. Yeah, man, she really cool. Got a good head on the shoulders, man. That's so what's I wanna, up, man. Yeah, I want to shout out Marissa. I mean, if she, um, cause I gave her my information, like, look, you know, just check us out on the show. You know, check us out on the page and follow us. That way you can learn some things and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, and not only just learn some stuff, you know, like some other folks. And uh, actually, when I went to the library, I kind of had out, a, you know, you know, some info. So, yeah, man, we just, hey, we trying to do it right here, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I believe in it. You know what I'm saying? So, we going to do our thing. You know, whether it's one people to four people to exactly. 400, we going to get there. That's how we going, that's how we see it. That's so, it, man. It is you what know. it is. We just got to stay consistent. And, you know, we appreciate, you know, the few of y'all who do catch us. So, you know, once we get big, we're going to remember all y'all, you know, who, who who started with us in the beginning. So, you know how that is. But, um, you know, quick shout out, man, to Netflix, man. Watch that um, Evolution of Hip Hop, man. Um, that really is good. Yeah, you know I got to finish watching. Oh, it's Hip Hop Evolution. Yeah. Hip Hop Evolution. Yeah, I still got to watch the rest of it. Yeah, I watched all the episodes, man. So, it's really good. You know, they really get some one-on-one -on -one interviews with a lot of people who are um, major influencers in hip-hop. One of the things I liked, I was watching an episode earlier today, and they were interviewing uh, Moni Love about, you know, the whole, the, yeah, the whole impact of females in hip-hop. And they were kind of referencing her as one of the earlier females, and she was like, wait, hold up, before you start putting me in the mix... Don't forget Shy Rock. Yes, sir. Don't forget Pebbly Poo. You know what I mean? Yeah. So she was throwing, so that's what I'm talking about. That's real hip hop right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? <clears throat> where you where you have that respect for those who came before you. So you don't say, well, no, don't think it started with me. Don't forget about these over here. You know, that's what we don't have enough of these days. People who say, you know, I want to give a shout out to the ones who opened the door for me. You know what I mean? So I really love that about what she said. She was like, hold up, you know, let's not even do that. Don't forget, boom, boom, boom. She started naming off all of them. You know what I mean? So, I, I kind of want to expound on that because it's funny you say that. Um, mm -hmm. I was listening to uh, Vlad TV. They had MC Search on there. Okay, I've been and, wanting to watch that. I haven't yeah, seen that episode and yet. Actually, when MC Search was on there, they was actually talking about how um, well, Vlad pretty much said like, well, you guys were like the first to actually be like. As far as like white rappers be the one to actually like kind of you know rap the modern style, yeah, and um, influence that. So if it wasn't for you guys, all these white rappers wouldn't you know it wouldn't been where they're at. And like Serge was like, well, you know, I don't really view myself like that. I um you know we don't view I don't view third base like that. We I view third base as in this is what third base was for that time period. And the certain people that was from, you know, the fans and the people that was in there for that time period, this is what this is for. And, you know, what came after that, like, you know, House of, well, he didn't say House of Pain, but like, mm -hmm. whatever came out else after that, then they had their influences. You know, I just, I just don't want everybody to look at me like, oh, well, you know, if it wasn't for me, you right. wouldn't be doing, you know what I'm saying? Nah, it wasn't, it wasn't that, so. I mean, it's kind of a different, it was kind of like a different perspective. I mean, and I, and I you know, I don't expect, like, certain to really gloat in it. I mean, I see what yeah, he was saying. Yeah, he's not that type. You know, yeah, right. I see what he was saying. Um, but, you know, to, to those who don't know, and I'm pretty sure you know if you're on this channel, but for those who don't know, Serge is the one that found uh, Nas, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, if it wasn't for him, you know, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have, you know, my man Nasty up there. Yeah, man. man. So, um, but yeah, man, it was, a, it was a pretty good interview for that, for the part I seen. I didn't get to see the whole thing. Well, it was like a little snippet. I didn't get to, you know, see the full, uh, excuse me, the full interview. Okay, so, yeah, I'm going to have to check that out. Um. Shout out to Eddie Jr. What up, man? Eddie Jr., Nanya, and Jermaine. Appreciate Jermaine, you, appreciate Nanya. you. Yep. What's up, y'all? What's up? So, thank y'all for Yeah, we're going to keep this quick for, you know, the Greenboro audience because we know it's G. Oh. 
Ho! Chief! Ho! Chief! Ho! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, we know how y'all get down yeah, around here, so. Wild, boy. We ain't gonna keep y'all too long, because, uh. Niggas gonna know, get shot. It's jumping, <laughs> off, it's jumping off tonight, and, uh, you know, the emergency crew is gonna be out there in a little while, so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, and shout out to Sh- Search. You know, I wonder what Pete Nice is doing these days, man. Yeah, you know, there's. Nothing from him. Um, I, last time I seen from Pete Nice, like actually him and Search was on like the Sway in the morning. They did, uh, they talked a little bit about hip hop, and they did a little bit of um, they did a little bit of like uh, step into the AM. Okay, I, that's the okay. first song I heard from them. I never knew they were white when I was a little kid. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Listen, back when 102 was like the shit. But like when I was listening to them, you know they had a little, you know, a little mix and all that stuff. Like I always said that, like step into the AM, but I never knew who that was. But yeah, yeah. see, I knew they were white. Cause see, for me, I was never that big. I listened to radio, but I've always been into the video. So Rap City and Yo MTV Rap. So that's how I first saw them. So I knew they were white right off the bat, and I didn't even care. It was just like they dope. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So Pete Nice did one solo album. Um, it didn't do so well, I don't think, but I remember him doing one solo album. I used to have that, it was like something, yeah, the intro track was like, oh, you dirty, rotten, rat bastard, right. oh, you dirty, rotten, rat yeah. bastard. <laughs> so it was... Yeah, those, those, uh, yeah, those joints was like, the beats yeah. were pretty hard on it, like, grimy and gritty, definitely like. It's one of those things where they just work better together. I think a lot of people, once they split up, everybody was just like, yeah... But, you know, we need y'all back like this. Yeah. Well, so, what, what what do you think? Of, well, you know, you got groups like Outkast who... See, that, that's the thing. When you're... See, third base were both talented, but they were never... I don't think they were both dope enough to be just solo, solo acts. So, especially Pete Nice. He was dope, but he's one that just goes better with a partner. Now, Search can do a little bit better on the solo tip, but even he won't wouldn't last that long, you know, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, so, you know, some of the best acts, they can do solo, but they better off together, like EPMD, for me, when EPMD broke up, which that hurt my heart, yeah, mm, Eric Sermon did so much better than Paris Smith, Paris Smith just didn't do good as a solo artist, he was just there, you know what I mean, you just didn't forget about him, but... They were still better together because once they got back together and they did that first um, re, re, reunion album, the back in business, man, right? Yeah, I was all over that. My mind was just blown because I kept hearing the rumors. You know, they probably gonna get back together. They probably. Gonna, and next thing I know, one day I turned on Rap City and I saw the video. I said Eric Sermon, he was just rapping. And then I saw P coming. I was like, Yo! Oh! I was like, Oh, this nigga back. So, you know, I lost my damn mind right there. So, oh, that's man. one of those things. You know, it's just like, you know, when Wu-Tang, you know, they do good as solo, but when they come together, oh, God. it's like fucking Voltron. Ooh. You know what I mean? And just forms ahead. You, you know, know what I mean? You know what I mean? Oh, so, my God. <laughs> so, for me, it's, I think third base just were better as a group. So, you know, I think that's why it just didn't work that good. But I would still like to know where Pete Nice is. You know, he could he could probably tell some hip hop stories, have his own radio show, you know, one of those types of deals. Yeah, we need to, I mean? we need to adopt like a missing milk carton or something. Right. Like that. yeah, yeah, like that's what we need to do like yeah, for this show to start with. Like, have anybody seen <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Mr. S- yeah, we need to do a missing milk carton show. Exactly. Yeah, you remember when Nas did the We All They Now song? Oh, oh God, that was incredible. Yeah. Oh my God, I forgot yeah. all about that, that shit. Was- that yeah. was dope, man. Damn, he, Cash got know, in there. And yeah. Fucking, man. He wasn't like disrespecting. He was just like, you know, these are people that were so influential, so we need to know where y'all at. God, you know boy. So, that that was, was man, I might have to, I got that somewhere. Yeah, I might have to go back and, yeah. and like dig that up. Man, oh, my man. God. Oh, man. Yeah, he did. They like killed West that Coast, shit. He did a West Coast version and the East Coast version. Oh, he did an East West Coast? Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yep, it was yeah. dope, man. That's so, love. Man. That's love of it, man. But yeah, man, um, as far as, um, you know, the current events in hip hop, let's go ahead and Yeah, I'm sorry, we got kind of, we kind of geeked yeah, out yeah, for a we, bit. we're very nostalgic <laughs> like that, so, this week a few albums have dropped, if y'all ain't heard it, you know, Swiss Beats, um, released an album called Poison, 
It's got a lot of good features. It's got um, Nas on the song, Lil Wayne on the song. Um, two chains two on there. Chains. Was that, this is actually some pretty good yeah, stuff. Yeah, I think you got one with Young Thug um, and a couple of new cats. But, um, you know, it's a really good, solid album. A lot of the younger generation, I don't think, are really into it as much because it has more of a throwback feel. So it sounds more like early Swiss beats, you know what I mean? He's trying to keep that real hip-hop sound. So I think a lot of the younger generation is like, oh, I'm not really hearing what I normally hear, you know what I mean? People ain't mumbling like they, they should be, you know what I mean? So it's one of those things. So, But it's a good album. Um, so y'all need to check that out, um, especially the joint with Nas. That's really good. Um, who else uh, dropped the album? Um, uh, 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 what's his name? Um, what's the white dude's name? Oh, Action Bronson. Action Bronson dropped Action the album Bronson. called um, White Bronco. I have not heard this one, but he's a pretty good rapper. I like him. You know, I just, um, I kind of... Pushed him away a little bit after he disrespected Ghostface uh, a few years ago. If you remember that. that, yeah, I remember, yeah, you know, that shit was. He, I ain't gonna he lie. He dropped down a few pegs in my in my respect book. So you know he did apologize. You know what I mean? But um, it yeah. really just messed me up because I was like, you don't do that. You Yo, know you, you you know you in trouble mm-hmm. when a nigga put on a motherfucking R and B record, <laughs> start goddamn talking at you. Ghostface, like, and yo, Ghostface, that that dude. yo, let me talk to you for a minute, right? Man. I'm gonna put this song on, man. Get my drink. You know what I mean? Yeah, you. I'm like, yeah, you, you can't. Nah, you he can't had to be dealt with. <laughs> Go yeah, finish doing a smoking jacket. What's yeah, anytime, now? anytime a dude do that, <laughs> you not go near that dude. That's I'm right. for real, yo. You don't want that. Yeah, you don't want that. They killing you to an R&B song. That's a vicious <laughs> motherfucker right there. So exactly. you don't do shit like that. So, <laughs> but he just dropped this white Bronco album. Yeah. So you know, it, it may be worth it. Listen to you know, look it up, see what you think. Um, because you know he's he's a decent rapper. I like him. You know what I mean? So um, and then we got Styles P. He just dropped a new album yep, called yep, Dime Bag. Yep, yep. So I've been listening to that today. That's hard. That joint go hard. And he still got that other album, Beloved album, yeah. with uh, Dave V. So don't forget yeah. about that as well. I mean, they just dropped it like a month and a half ago. And now Styles P dropped another solo joint called Dime Bag. So hey, man, content dude is team. consistent. Yes, sir. And that's how you got to be in hip hop. You got some. You got to have that consistency, man, where... where no matter what's going on, you you put your music out. You know what I mean. And the cover art is dope for um, Dime Bag. I like it. So when y'all see it, it got um, it got it on YouTube. You know what I mean. But definitely support that man. That's real hip hop right there. Um, it's like ten tracks on there, so it's a solid album. You know what I mean. Well, Style P, man, just to talk about them and stuff. Cause I've been noticing too, like mm-hmm. I think like last over the last year, the year before last, you've been really working with yeah. like artists that you really wouldn't think that you would work with. Like right. he did the thing with um with uh Quali uh, yeah. way back. Yeah. That's right. yeah, yeah, like yeah. a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. I, and some of the tracks are just slamming and just and really, you know, they work well together. I mean, I hope that they do some you know, do some more work together in the future. It'd be great, really. And the, like to see Style P, Kylib, and Davies like working exactly. together. That would, would be great. Yeah, because I mean, I've seen him work with artists like Gene Gray. You know, who don't get a lot of spotlight, but Shout out are just Gray. incredible. Yeah, Gene Gray is one of my favorite lyricists. Period. Not I heard just I would, female, just period. I wish you her and Rhapsody would get together. Right. They did that. Oh man, man. What? man. <laughs> I would go buy that album as Woo! soon as I heard about it. I don't oh, even man. care about the song. I don't even care. I just I know when I hear it, I'm gonna like it. So damn, that would be that great. would be dope, man. Perhaps if we just and Gene Gray, we just threw something out there, like if you, you know what I'm saying, right. you get in your camp. Yeah, <laughs> man. So if y'all ain't up on Gene Gray, you better go check that girl out, man. She been in this game since like. 2006 somewhere in that area, yeah, around six that or seven, and she's been sharp, man. And she's one of those super lyrical but super underrated MCs because she's not mainstream. She doesn't just do radio a lot. You know, you just hear her every now and then. She'll drop an album every now and then. So, yeah, but she, man, when she do features, she kills everybody on the record. Yeah. She kills everybody on the record. First time I heard her, she did something with um, 
uh, Mortal Technique. Yeah, Mortal and Technique, yep. Was it Brutal Ali? Ali? I thought they were um, on yeah, the same. Yeah, I thought they were yeah. both in the same track. Right. You're right. That's it was all on the same track. Yeah. That, that, um, that's called The Illest. I remember that track. It's called The Illest, and she killed that. It was Brother Ali and Mortal Technique, her, and somebody else. It might have been I'm Tyler Kwali, like you said. Mm-hmm. But that's that's one of the dopest songs I heard, man. And the beat just goes so hard. It's like, do 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 da, do 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 da, do 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 da. It's one of those boom bats right there. You know what I mean? So <laughs> look that up. Um, it's Immortal Technique. It's called the Illis. And you'll hear Gene Gray. That's one of the, um, one of the dopest songs I ever heard. Oh, and a dude named Pumpkinhead. 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 He was on there. Yeah. So she's done songs with um, Pharrell Marge. Um, um, most deaf, Talib, Styles, you know, a bunch of good rappers, man. So she's definitely doing her thing, you know what I mean? So and she's been in the cipher before too, only one time, but she she need to come back. She been in the BT cipher. Really? I yeah. didn't know that. Mm-hmm. What year was that? Around maybe fifteen or fourteen, somewhere okay. in that area. So yeah. It's well, kind of bad though. Niggas probably sitting with watching like that. No way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I'm BT just, they just don't do the cypher like they used to, man. It's like they just going downhill. Make BT black again. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Nonya says she uh, super dope and hella underrated. You right about that, yep, man. Yep. So, and you know, let's talk about um, Kanye West a little bit, man. Um, you know, we've been talking about this whole thing where he flip flopped a little bit. He know. feels used. <laughs> he feels used. So you know, he was going hard for Trump. You know, with the MAGA hat and just I love this up, man saying he loved him and I love this man. You know, and you everybody has a right to their opinions and views. So you know, we can't really knock him for that. We just don't understand your logic. Sometimes I just don't understand why you're doing things. And so earlier this week. On social media, he um, put out a um, a post that said, you know, basically, I feel like I've been used to spread, you know, beliefs that I don't really believe in. So I'm gonna just step away from politics. And so you were saying that, you know, you heard, you you kind of got an understanding of why he did that. What is your take on that? Well, I'm think what for what I've heard, and this is just hearsay. And I, because I just heard this over radio. Yeah. Um, the reason why he is stepping back is because the people are not messing with his, uh, it started affecting his shoe sales. Okay. So that's the reason why he was trying to go back and, you know, scale back, I guess, and say, like, I've been brainwashing you so you can get that money. So, I mean, I, I mean, I don't blame him on that. Yeah. And I mean, for, in a way, I do think he's been brainwashed, but. You know, I hope he's not doing this as kind of a, a, a ploy just to sell shoes and now he's going to be so more pro-black and, you know, forget Trump now and just to sell shoes. I don't want it to be that. If you have a view politically or, or you know, morally or anything, it should be just because that's what you believe in. You know, not just, well, people ain't buying my shoes, so let me go ahead and try to do things a little And then again, it might be another political ploy. You know what I'm saying? You never know. I mean, in and, 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 and that regards, and then two, you know, I mean, there was, some, and him with the rant he did in the office, there yeah. is some truth to what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you really break it down, I mean, especially the 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment, right he, he's right about that because if you go back and, re- if you go and read it, it literally, it abolished slavery but if you com- yeah, but if you commit crime, then you're automatically you know a slave. That's why the prisoner you know the prison yeah. industrial complex system is the way it is set up right now. It's new yeah, slavery because it, it does say you know slavery cannot exist in the United States except you know for for crimes for punishment and stuff like that. So if you go to prison, they can make you a slave if they want to. They have that right based on the Constitution. You know, based on your illegal activity. So, you know, I see why he was saying that. You know what I mean? That we need to get rid of it. We need to, it just needs to be no slavery, period. It don't need to be an exception. It's actually in the 14th Amendment, if you read that too, honestly. There's actually in the 14th Amendment, like if you get, 
if you get like government assistance and stuff like that, you pretty much sign your rights away. Right. Yeah. Right. That's true. That's true. And, and you know, that's 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 how all of the that's how they really get you because there's always some kind of little but part in there. But you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah you know. Unless, you're free, but, you know, however. Right. It's always a however or a but. In clause. You know, <laughs> except you know, with the exception of. So, you know, it's one of those things you got to really be careful. And so I get where he was coming from. But most people just know that the 13th Amendment abolishes slavery. So they're like, you crazy, man. Why would you want to get rid of that? So he's saying, you know, it's not that part. It's the other part. Yeah. So I don't know, man. But I hope that he, he said he's going to get back to just being creative and making music. So let's see what happens. You know what I mean? So maybe get T.I. back in the building. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, because T.I. said they had that long conversation, and, and uh, T.I. said when he walked away, he kind of felt like, wow, this dude, he out to lunch, man. Yeah. They, and actually, you know, I like that whole, the, I mean, and that was, I know that was like a couple, about a year ago, right? The E versus the people. Yeah. Man. I like the way they did that. That was, yeah. that was really a good concept. Yeah. It hasn't was. really been done too much. Right. It was. It was really good, man. He's definitely creative, man. It's like his production, man. A lot of his beats, I just be like, how the hell did you come up with that? His beats just be sick. But um, you know, his 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 viewpoint sometimes just I just don't agree with. But anyway, man, I mean that's Kanye, man. So we're gonna yeah. see what he does next, man. You know. Um I know y'all probably heard about, you know, Nicki Minaj and Cardi B earlier this week. Having their little back and forth on social media where they were both um, um, pretty vocal about each other. Started with Nikki talking about Cardi and the whole fight at the New York Fashion Week, saying that you know actually when 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 Cardi came out with that speed knot on her head, it wasn't really that security accidentally hit her. Supposedly it was um, one of Nikki's um, homegirls, a uh, chick named. Um, Something Ali. What is it? Um, you mean? Yeah, I forget. No, nope. something <clears throat> Ali. Ra Ali. Ra Ali. Mm-hmm. So, supposedly, this girl was over there wailing on um, Cardi. Not just like one hit, just like bam, bam, bam. She's, according to Nikki, she hit Cardi like nine times. And, and Nikki said she could just hit a pound and boom, boom, boom. And uh, supposedly, Nikki's like, we got the footage. You know, our security people took their footage and, you know, there's footage in the building. So we got the proof. And then what's funny about that was by the time Nikki got to the end of her statement, she goes, if anybody's got that footage, I'll pay you $100,000 for it. But wait a minute, didn't you say you got that? But you just said you, you had got it. The head. You know what I mean? So why are you offering to pay somebody for the footage that you already have? So that's, that's what kind of makes Nikki look a little suspect. So of course... Um, that was on Queen Radio and then Cardi B went on her social media and did a live video and kind of went in on her and she said the same thing how you gonna say you got the video but then say I need to get somebody to bring it so I'll pay him 100000 so you know it do look a little suspect she keeps <coughs> talking about yeah I'm a bad bitch like nah right you a builder, bitch. <laughs> yeah, that was you wasn't that bad exactly. when you first came out. Exactly. Don't you, you know, don't, and, don't and you. Your, 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 your music wasn't the same as it was, you know, now when you first came out either. She was doing a lot of underground, you know, harder stuff. You know what I mean? She's she's grown on me even with this pop stuff. She's grown on me. I, I have to give Nikki that. She got skills. Yeah. Yeah, she got skills. It's just, I don't like her song choice. I, she's more into making popular music than just making hip-hop. You know what I mean? She's like, look, this is what the people like, so let me go ahead and just do that. You know, they like when I do the little voice, and they like when I do the Barbie thing. You know, they like this, and so she kind of developed that whole image or gimmick, if you will, whatever. Yeah, well, I mean, it... Not the compare, not the compare to Will Smith, but Will Smith, he kind of did the voices thing, so, I mean, it's, it's no... I mean, it is some difference, but it ain't no different, I guess, in a sense. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because uh, she playing a character or whatnot, so I get it. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of Will Smith, he's supposed to be bringing some new music out, actually. Because he's been testing his skills back on the mic. You know, if you see, if you follow him on social media, 
he been doing some little um some little freestyles here and there and he sounded pretty good. So he's talking about dropping some music um here pretty soon from what I hear. Well, I think what what is so taboo about Will Smith? You know what I'm saying? Cause like really a lot of people be like, oh Will Smith, he ain't this and oh he's all clean and you know, he ain't no thug and right. he always do all these clean but you know, if you listen to what he's like pressing like uh what is it? Uh What's that one? Get the jig, getting jiggy with his song. Jiggy, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, he's saying some shit. Like yeah. my man, nice with the bar. Like he yeah. ain't, he ain't, um, he ain't no slouch. Yeah. I think a lot of people get don't like him because maybe the voice it ain't so, it ain't so deep. It's not like the grimy, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? It ain't that? You know, it's it's you know. Yo, I mean, as as a person who just loves hip hop, I have to admit when his first album came out. When he was Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, I bought that first album. With parents just don't understand and all of that, and it had some really good songs on it. Um, he actually got skills, but a lot of people glossed over him because even though he got skills, he does a lot of commercial type of um, popular topics, and 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 his his style of rap just doesn't hit the underground where they want him to hit. You know what I mean? So, you know, he like did a song called Nightmare on My Street where he did like a song about Freddy Krueger. Yeah. And I thought the song was dope, but because people in the inner cities who go through struggles, they want to hear you rapping about them struggles sometimes. You know, they want to hear about the stuff that they can relate to. So for them, it was a little more, okay, he not serious. You know what I mean? He just... He playing, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's so, kind of like the Fat Boys, too. Same right. thing, like Jell House Rock. Yeah. Like, we so, ain't trying to hear that shit. Right. We trying to hear NWA straight out Conference. Right. Real nigga. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, he might be um, knowing you. Um, no, you. He, he just turned 50, so I don't know. But if you really follow him, like on Instagram, he got some videos where he dropping some little lyrics. And I was like, okay, okay. I'm going I'm to um, holler at you, Big Willie. <laughs> but, um... But yeah, I mean, I don't think really age really matters nah, when it comes man. to hip hop. You know what I mean? If you can still rap, you can still rap. I think the only problem is the youth, the people who are younger, visually they're gonna look at you like you're too old. But if you were just hearing if you just heard somebody on the radio and you never saw them, you wouldn't care about their age. All you would care about is the music. Did they do something I like? You know what I mean? So that's my thing. If he was just one of those where you didn't know his age, you would actually like what he was doing. You know what I mean? So, to me, age doesn't matter. Like, KRS, I'm sure he's about 50 right now. Yeah, I think and so. he can still spit with the best of them. You know what I mean? He's still going around touring and battling people, just battling people in the audience at his shows. So, he don't even care. Yeah, you can't, you, you, you can't test an old rapper, though. Right. Especially, like, one, like, those high kind calibers they keep you know what I'm saying right they keep writing and stuff yeah yeah they got yeah. they got a whole dictionary and stuff like they disposed exactly so that is what it is man G Rap still doing it I'm sure he's in the late 40s oh man that shit he got was like uh you know uh son of G Rap I think yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. that shit go hard that go hard man 38 special man yeah 38 special that joint is hard, so he just dropped that. I mean, every almost every year G Rap been dropping something. You know what I mean? At least every one to two years, he been dropping music. So, and his stuff is still hot, man. And speaking of the age, you know, you were talking about, you know, the G Rap. Not the because uh, I was listening to, um, I think Rock the Bells Radio, Cypress Hill came on there. You know, about they top five, and they mentioned G Rap. Yeah, and Bugs is like, man, I. I had the pleasure to work with this guy, and he still he can still come out and spit stuff, and people like you know people can still gravitate toward him and stuff. Yeah. Like it's like it, it's like it's like he really reinvents himself, and you know does his thing, man. And that's so, how it should be. You know what I mean? That you know another one uh, who inv- reinvents himself a lot is um, Redman. If you really listen to it, the last few albums he did. You, you hear him doing a lot of different stuff, like fast rap, trying to do speed up and, you know, slow it down a little bit. He do a lot of little stuff where you be like, okay, I see you, I see you. Red Man is one of those, man. He's timeless, man. Man, did you see that one back in 2015, uh, 2016, they did the, when he did the uh, 
the BET Cypher. Yeah. And everybody, was like, everybody was comparing them to Jay Z. I'm yeah. like, oh. <laughs> Hey, but like, that was when they did that Death Squad cipher. Yeah, oh he, man, he killed that man. Yeah. And um, yeah, he 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 stays relevant. You know what? Matter of fact, speaking of Red Man, let me mention this real quick. If y'all don't know about How High, the the movie, it was him and Method Man. They're doing a How High Part Two, and he and him and Red him and Method Man are not in it. So a lot of people are disappointed about that because it's like. You know, that was their thing. That was their, their project. You know, it wasn't like somebody else thought of that movie and, and said, I want them to play in it. That was their project. And so now they're doing a How High Part 2, but they're not going to be in it from what I hear. So I don't know, man. It wasn't like the greatest movie, but it was still dope. Yeah, it was a classic. And, you know, I don't think they should do one without them too. You know what I mean? They, made, they definitely made the movie. Yeah. They definitely made the movie. Yeah, so... Um, and Nonya was saying that um, you can't really compare KRS to Will Smith. I mean, I get what you're saying. Will's nowhere near as good as KRS, but I'm just, just talking about the age. You know what I mean? Yeah, and Will so actually good. sounds better than he did years ago when I hear him now. You know what I mean? He sounds pretty good. So I'm just saying give him give him a chance. You know what I mean? So. Uh, what up, Trey Ward? <laughs> what up, what up? What up, what up? <laughs> Yo, that was, that was uh, but you know they both Will and, and KRS are both up there around the same age group I'm sure you know what I mean so we gonna see what he do man I know um, KRS one can still drop albums and you know people will still listen um, you remember the album he did with Buckshot that was dope when, when, when did he do that one um, it was um, 2000 and it was like the first Part of the 2000, like the 2010, somewhere in that era between. But off the of boot camp, a uh, boot camp clip, right? Yeah, I know he dropped something. Yeah, it was uh, it was him and Buckshot. It was somewhere around maybe 2010, I want to say somewhere close to there or nine, maybe 2009. I know that he did. Um, I know he did some stuff with. Uh, Wait, well, nah, he just dropped an album <clears throat> in 2016. Yeah, I do know that. Oh, and Jermaine said they're doing another Bad Boys movie. You're right. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see that. And yeah. Enzel's supposed to be in it. Supposedly. Yeah, so Will Smith officially announced that he had uh, Martin Lawrence on his social media. And he was like, yeah, it's official. Bad Boys 3 is coming out. So that's going to be dope. Now, you know that. something I wish that they do? Cause, and this is what I, cause what I know is they have the right to this. Do you remember... Um, Bill Cosby and Sidney uh, Sidney Poitier did the movie uh, uh, Uptown Saturday Night. Yeah, I was just about to Let's say. Let's do it again, and a piece of the action. Yeah, Will Smith got the rights to those movies for real. Yeah, for oh, a lot, for man. far as I know, that would be dope. As man. far as I know, and he was trying to get like Martin to go into it, like to make a modern yeah uh, version of it. But this was back in like 2000, like the early 2000s. So why this year? What up, man? What up, my man? Slow like him, bro. That's my Muslim brother yeah, right what there, up, man. Yeah, what up, what up, So, um, but yeah, he, they supposed to do that, you know, and um, so it would be interesting to do, especially now, yeah. since, you know, Cosby in jail, it would be kind of cool to respark those again. If, and people, y'all haven't seen those movies and my favorite one out of that is like, let's do it again. That shit's hilarious. Uptown Saturday Night has some shit in it too, though. That I didn't cool. actually see Let's Do It Again. I God, I, I got all three of them at home. I got, oh, man. Yeah, I, I got Uptown. I got Uptown Saturday Night. A piece of, I mean, yeah, let's do it again. And a piece of the axe. Oh, yeah. Nah, I can't tell y'all that. I can't tell y'all that lot because I, I, I have an idea for an album. <laughs> Yeah, that was used for a snippet, and I can't give that away because it's so fucking good. Yeah, it is so fucking good, and I man, can't, I can't. I had to tell my man Curtis. I'm gonna have to borrow that. <laughs> I seen it on Saturday, uh, Uptown Saturday night, but I haven't seen the other one, so I'm gonna have to check those out. Because oh, um, that would be dope, man. I think you know somebody like Will Smith. You know, you get somebody like maybe a Denzel. You know, they could do something with that, man. Some, I was definitely stellar actors. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just don't, just don't put just anybody in that. You know, you gotta really rep hard when you do those remakes. You know what I mean? Because those are classic movies right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They could, like, you know, you you could, man. Think about like Pam Greer, Foxy Brown. You know what I mean? She she's another one, man. They it would take a lot to really replicate what she did, you know what I mean? Yeah. So she was real big for females in the music um 
I mean, uh, in the movie industry, you know, years ago, so, and, um, it, it's, man, I still love her. She was one of my first crushes right there when I was a kid. She, she still look good. Yeah, man. She, I still look good. Jawad said much, much love to you, Howie. What up, man? Appreciate you, man. Yeah, man. Brother said he just getting off work, man. I know how that is, man. Man, yo. Working hard, man. Right, we appreciate you tuning in, taking time off, and, you know, and, uh, where he working? He got any food? I need to sneak, <laughs> need to sneak some stuff off the truck. Right. You know, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Ship some stuff down yeah, here in North Carolina. Melody, my fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. So, you Melody. know, we ain't going to keep y'all much longer. We going to wrap it up in a yeah, minute, yeah, man. Yeah. Cause, you know, we trying to keep it quick today. But, um, you know, it's all for hip-hop, man. You know, we were just talking about the Bad Boys um, 3 coming out and... You know, possibly uh, getting some remakes on some classic movies like Uptown, Saturday Night, Sidney Poitier, Bill Cosby. So, you know, stuff like that, man, would be dope, man, just for, for, for um, black culture, period. Definitely. So, you know. And but, um, it, it not, I mean, not only black culture, I think just culture, period, because, yeah. I mean, those, those movies, man, were, um, they were kind of groundbreaking in a sense. And then on top of that, too, like the, um, well, the third one, Piece of the Action, I yeah. can have Jane, uh, James Earl Jones Jr. in it. You know, yeah. the guy that did the Dark Vader. Yeah. Movie. So, I mean, yeah, man, like, it's just, you know, that's like a, just an epic thing. And actually, it'd be kind of cool. He'd be back in it somehow. Or is he still, wait a minute, hold on. Is he still living? Who? James Earl Jones. Um, yeah, yeah, he's still alive. Um, 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 Jawad is talking about a movie from the 90s. I know the one you're talking about. It had a lot of rappers in it. It was Ed Lover and Dr. Dre. What was that? Oh, shit. Don't get me that. <coughs> when Eric Sermon uh, first broke off from EPMD, his first song, um, was from that. It was from the soundtrack of that. It was, um, Who Something. It was Who, Who, Who's the Man? Who's the Man? That was it. I think that's what you talking about. That was Spike about. Lee did that? Nah, um, I don't think it was a Spike Lee joint, but I know it had a lot of rappers in it. Um, it had G Rap was in it, um, Ed Lover and Dr. Dre yeah, were I'm the main character. Yeah, I'm about to go back and watch that. Yeah, uh, I think it was Ed Lover and Dr. Dre's movie. I think they kind of wrote it, and then they just hired other people to direct it and stuff. But they had a lot of cameos from rappers and stuff like that, and um, it was really good. So I think that's what you're talking about, Jawad. That was like. Um, one of my favorite soundtracks because uh, it had some good songs on that soundtrack. The um, Eric Sermon song "Hitting Switches" was on that. We might have to do that. We might have to do uh, talk of, like a little bit of hip hop soundtracks next time, or mm -hmm. you know, one time talk about like you know, because I've been one which I hate. I lost that soundtrack. There was one Office Space. Yeah, it was like a good hip hop. Song. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had other music in there too. Yeah, but that was a good hip hop soundtrack. Yeah, man, it's been some really, you know, hip hop has come a long way in movies, man. You know, yep, yep. and if you really want to be a hip hop, you know, lover of hip hop or a hip hop historian, go back and watch uh, Wild Style. Yes, sir. That was one of the first. Beat Street, uh, uh, Crush Groove. Uh, Run DMC's movie Tougher Than Leather, that was dope. Breaking one and two, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, Breaking one and two, they did a sequel on that. Yeah, because I see was on that one. Yeah, in yeah. The second one. Um, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so those those were some of the first hip hop movies, you know what I mean? You know, um, Wild Style had you know appearances from like Busy B. Had Fat Five Freddy in there. Crush Groove had like everybody from Curtis Blow to Fat Boys, um, Russell Simmons, uh, who else? The Beastie Boys. Yeah, actually, the Beastie Boys did something on uh, Rock the Bells and Influence of Hip Hop the other day. Word? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, Ad Rock and uh, Michael D, because, you know, yeah. the FBA ain't, you know. But yeah, they did that the other day. So y'all should check that out on Series yeah, XM 43. That's, that's some homework for y'all right there, man. Go check out some of those early hip-hop movies and check out, like you said, Rock the Bells, Radio, because they're doing big things over there, man. So, But, um, but yeah, that was pretty much all I had for this week, man. Did you have anything else you wanted to touch on? Nah, man. Just everybody, you know, we appreciate y'all coming in, tuning in with us. Man, keep checking us out. Check us out here. Um, 
we're going to try to get on to YouTube. We're, well, we're on YouTube. What we're trying to do, like I talked to my man Curtis, we want to try to cut up some of these videos because I know sometimes y'all don't have like a whole hour to sit down. So we can just chop it, you know, chop up maybe 15 minute segments or five minutes, you know, well, about 15. Yeah. You know, 15 minute segments, y'all can watch something real quick, man, you know, so y'all can keep following. So we appreciate y'all, man. Everybody that came in the chat room today, man, we appreciate y'all. We appreciate y'all watching. Yes, sir. That's all for love, man. Yeah. So. The Try and Hip Hop Podcast is your man Kurt Dog. And I'm Howie. And we're gonna see y'all next time. Peace. Peace.